finally, a vacation. Come on, son. Wow, oh my god, it's so pretty. Hey, kiddo, why don't you go play outside? <sighs> Dad, shut the f up, I'm playing Minecraft. Fine. Airbnb is tackling privacy concerns this morning after several customers found hidden cameras at their rental properties. The company told CBS News it takes privacy extremely seriously, and there is absolutely no place in our community for this kind of behavior. Oh, that, that couldn't happen here. Oh, at least there can't be one in here. That's nice, Dad. Over the past decade, cameras have shrunk in size and price. This has made it easier for young filmmakers to get started in the industry and made phone cameras even better. But it has also unfortunately made spy cameras cheaper and easier to come by. All over the world, you may have heard stories of people finding hidden cameras in their rentals, hotels, or Airbnbs. There are even stories of people finding cameras in their own homes. Fortunately, spy camera detectors do exist. This example is able to detect radio signals, look for hidden lenses, and is easy to obtain on Amazon. However, it may or may not be as effective as using your own computer and Wireshark to do the same thing for free. While this device can physically detect cameras, a lot of hidden cameras nowadays use Wi-Fi to communicate, meaning we can use packet monitoring software like Wireshark in order to detect the presence of the camera. The best part is, Wireshark is free and can probably run on your existing computer, making it a lot less suspicious looking than this thing. So let's go ahead and put these two things to the test. Is it really worth it to spend your money on this? The K18 multifunction anti-spy detector is marketed as an affordable spying device detector, but we're only concerned about the camera functionality. The lens here is surrounded by red LEDs, which should cause a reflection in any lens that it's pointed at. However, considering how tiny the lenses are in modern spy cameras, it might be difficult to get into the right position to actually cause a reflection in the lens that you're looking for. The radio frequency detector can be turned up and down in order to detect devices that are emitting radio signals. That makes it possible for us to track down a large number of devices that are radiating. So let's go ahead and try out this functionality. Oops. <laughs> Okay, the field of view is incredibly narrow. And then these antennas, like, I don't understand their purpose or how to use them. I mean, I don't see any cameras or glimpse of cameras. Whoa. Okay, I think I found one right here. Yeah, that's definitely something. There's one. And, if I had to guess, this one's the one that's sending stuff out. Yeah, there's definitely one here. Uh, there could be something under here, because that's a lot of suspicious wires. Okay, Michael, there's one camera that's plugged in and transmitting in here. Based on your forensic analysis, yes. which one is it? Uh, my expert opinion, based on using this um, cheap device, is... This camera is the one that's on and transmitting. And then there's one here, one here, and then one somewhere is here. Ready? Yeah, let's do it. It's a router, idiot! What? <laughs> that's so stupid. <laughs> that's st this thing really didn't like the router. So where is the actual one? Real camera is right. Okay. Actually, wait, wait, wait. If we go over here, right there. Whoa. If I had to do a second guess, I would have guessed this one because it, it didn't point exactly where, um, like here, but in this region, I was getting some hits, but that one, that was like, I had maximum sensitivity, right? Like, and then as y'all saw, like it was going off near electrical outlets and all kinds of other sorts of things that made it very ambiguous as to what was actually happening. 
Yeah, I, I used to be on a ghost team where they had the electromagnetic meters and things, and that's what we always joked about is like the uh, el random electrical outlets, anything that uh, is noisy in the electrical spectrum will set these things off and you're like, oh my God, I found paranormal activity. No, you know you haven't. Like I know I've seen like spy cameras that are like um, power outlet type devices and stuff like that. Um, and then like this thing wouldn't really work well for that because it would just go off at every power outlet, which would be very, very confusing. I mean, if you're super paranoid or if you're like, <laughs> A billionaire with a security guard, I could see maybe not this exact device, but something in this vein being a useful thing, but for like an average person checking out an Airbnb. You can pick up this K18 camera detector for $69 online, but what if you don't have 69 bucks? Are you doomed to just have pictures of you sleeping uploaded to the darknet and fund someone else's college? Well, no, you're not doomed. In fact, you can do most of this for free. If you've been watching our show for a while, you probably already know about Wireshark and all the ways it can be used for attack and defense. Today, we're gonna show off that it can also be used for finding hidden cameras. A lot of hidden cameras nowadays are connected to Wi-Fi, offering a live feed for whoever set it up. Fortunately, we can use Wireshark to hunt down the signals from those cameras and even use Wireshark to do things like intercept the images being streamed and hunt down the location of the camera in the real world using its signal strength. So I've hidden the camera in the living room and it's going to be up to Alex and his laptop to use Wireshark to track down the camera physically. He's going to be graphing the signal strength of the camera in order to try to find its location using Wireshark alone. So I'm gonna be using the IO graph on Wireshark in order to pinpoint the location of the hidden camera. I currently set up a few parameters that should let me track this by the signal strength, and we're gonna see how successful this is. To find the hidden camera, we can scan nearby wireless traffic for devices with MAC addresses belonging to camera manufacturers, like the Sony camera here. After we find the device we wanna track, we can write a filter using the MAC address or SSID that it's broadcasting, and plot the signal strength on a graph in order to track it down. All right, so I pulled up the IO graph and I currently have parameters set to track down the camera's SSID, as well as plot the signal strength on the y-axis. So that way we should be able to track down this camera um, by its RSSI field. So we're gonna start looking for the location of this camera. As you can see, we're not getting any feedback here. Looks like we have a really low signal strength. I would presume it's not towards this end of the room. Uh, it starts to jump up a little bit here. And if I actually plot this on a logarithmic scale, looks like we're getting a jump in signal strength around this area. Cool, so this general area tends to show more activity on the um, IO graph. And actually this very suspicious looking glade here, which looks to obviously have a camera rig to it, is giving us a very high signal strength which you can see immediately jumps up on this graph here. And as this indicates, um, we've basically pinpointed the location of this not so hidden camera. If you can't locate a camera connected to Wi-Fi, you can also still use the flashlight on your phone to walk around and see if you can get a reflection from the lens. Also, if the camera is using infrared, some phones like this Pixel are able to actually see infrared with an infrared camera. And you can use this feature in order to locate sources of infrared light where there shouldn't be. Based on Alex's experience, Wireshark was a pretty good tool for tracking down the physical location of a Wi-Fi security camera. But let's get a second opinion from a cybersecurity professional. Wireshark is great because it's able to analyze traffic on multiple levels of the stack, from DNS traffic to suspicious Wi-Fi device communications, making it sensitive to more things than a generic signal detector would have access to. Taking this even further, Wireshark may be able to detect wired Ethernet cameras that other detectors would have no chance of finding because, of course, the wired cameras are not emitting radio signals. However, Wireshark is complicated. It's more prone to operator error or potential false positives from someone who doesn't understand what to look for.
So if you find a hidden spy camera in your vacation rental, your first indication might be to simply destroy it, but you should not do that. These are not just creepy, they can be a serious crime if they're put in a place like a restroom, changing room, or somewhere else where they have not gained permission. So if you find one, you should make sure to preserve it. If you find a hidden spy camera, the first thing you should do is disable it, hopefully without removing any fingerprints. After that, you should contact the authorities, and if you're in something like an Airbnb, reach out to the company directly. If you're in a hotel, you should definitely tell the manager, and also hopefully ask for a new room. As for which one of these tools is best, well, they each have their ups and downs. The spy detector is able to find cameras even if they're not connected to Wi-Fi, but Wireshark is able to look for suspicious traffic, and may be able to spot cameras that otherwise would get lost in random radio interference. I would say overall, free is great, so if you're able to use Wireshark to get a view of potentially suspicious traffic, I would go with that first. Thanks for watching this episode of Ready Out on Hack 5. If you liked it, make sure to reach out to me on Twitter at Cody Kinsey. And if you want to ask us questions live on our Q&A session, make sure to check out the Security Forward channel where we will answer questions live every Tuesday. See you there. Thanks for supporting Hack 5. Find all our shows, community, and pen test products at hack5.org.